Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a lead technical advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. Hi, everyone. Matt DiNapoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 111 of Snack Minute. Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute bite of learning, coding, and just some cool stuff that we'd like you to know. And we are going to talk to you today about how to get started with AWS with our buddy, Dewan Lightfoot. Dewan, do you mind introducing yourself? Hey, everyone. My name is Dewan Lightfoot. I'm a developer advocate focused on cloud networking at AWS. The flying Hawaiian. <laughs> that awesome shirt you got going on here. You know, I felt festive being at Cisco Live. We're talking about Cisco. We're talking about AWS, the cloud network engineers. I just wanted to show my enthusiasm. Looking good, brother. Thank Looking you. good. So, oh, there you, you go. Start? No. Yeah, so AWS, uh, you're coming from AWS, so a, a, a large cloud provider. Right. Um, you know, most people think about these scenarios where um, I'm a software developer. I want a quick way to put my my application right. out for consumption out there. Right. We don't really look at it necessarily from the infrastructure or the the network engineer side from it. Right. And I would presume that a lot of network engineers that uh, start getting involved in cloud don't necessarily know how to get started because it's not necessarily the world that they they live in. And so you being from the network engineering world, can you kind of give us some insight into how network engineers can really kind of dive in and get started in any cloud provider? Not to mention it's it's pretty intimidating for a network oh, engineer crazy, to hear <laughs> cloud and, yeah. and AWS. So, you, you know, I am come from network engineer. And one of the things that I found being in that role was that I would often just stand up VPNs to the cloud. Okay. Not being able to see what's in the cloud or what's actually going on. Right. So when you talk about learning in the cloud, I think it's important for a network engineer to first understand which cloud provider they're in. Okay. I know I work for AWS and of course I want you to learn AWS, but I often believe that you should learn and apply what you actually do. Yeah. Because if you don't use it, you lose it. Exactly. Right. right? So when it comes to that, figure out which cloud provider your organization has, then at that point, determine if the cloud is something you need to learn. Because, go ahead, bro. No, 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 you're good. Yeah, because when it comes to learning the cloud, there are some fundamental, foundational principles. Of course, there's networking. Yeah. Then there's compute. Mm -hmm. Right. Then there's storage, database, and security. Yeah. These are all building blocks to when you talk about building applications and providing services to developers and organizations to build their products that they deliver to the community. Which sounds very familiar if you're coming from an infrastructure world on-prem, right. right? It's the, exactly the same building blocks except it's somebody else's network or somebody else's infrastructure. It's living in the cloud. There, but the there's, foundations, that meme. there's that meme with Morpheus that says... The cloud is just someone else's computer, Exactly. Right? <laughs> we should edit kinda. that in. <laughs> kind of. Kind of. Kind of. I'm simplifying it by a lot. Yeah. Yes, of yeah, course. So <laughs> when it comes to the cloud, on the networking aspect, one thing you have to remember, there's no layer two. Okay. Right. So when we're plugging in cables and we're that's looking a for big, that. That's a really big That's a big yeah, difference. Yeah, so continue because on Because for thought. a network engineer, we are visual. Exactly. Uh, right? Yeah. And so visualizing the boundaries and the borders yeah. of our networks is something that we pride ourselves on in our infrastructures. But in the cloud, we have serverless applications. We have microservices applications. We have virtual, vir virtualized um, virtual machines and things like that. So there's all these different ways to build applications. Now as a network engineer, you gotta figure out, do you provide private connectivity, public connectivity, hybrid connectivity? Is it egress, ingress? How do you provide security around that? And so that's the part when it comes to learning the cloud is understanding how can you secure, how can you provide that connectivity so a developer can develop their applications in the way they intend. And understanding that there is a, a need to have public access to the front end services. Exactly. While also securing your data right. in the back end services that is being provided upstream and, and being able to connect those two parts together in a way right. that you can say is secure and you feel confident in deploying. Yes. And like you said, you're taking out the, the physical aspect of the network engineer's job in that instance, but it doesn't mean connectivity goes away. Right. Um, but it just means the word port is something different, right? The word port is security based, right? Yeah, right. Pretty when much. it comes to your application, that's what you're really focusing on. You're not plugging into a switch, you're not plugging into a router, you're more focused on, okay, how am I providing connectivity to these cloud applications? Is it gonna be over VPN? Is it gonna be over some type of private connection like yeah. Direct Connect on AWS? Or are we using some type of SD-WAN in order to provide that access? So talk to us a little bit about, because I'm hearing the same verbiage as a 
network engineer right. who is after certifying with a CCNA. Everything on that blueprint you've mentioned or you've touched right. on right now and yes. you've spoken about it from a cloud perspective. So yes. tell us a little bit about how not only important, but it's still valid that getting your CCNA and being able to leverage the these certifications and these knowledge towards your cloud journey. In my career, the CCNA was probably the most valuable certification I got because it taught me networking at a foundational level and the way to apply that networking as a network engineer in a, in a role that I can actually do. Right. You know, sometimes you can learn skills, but when you get into a job role, you don't have a way to apply those skills. Mm -hmm. But as a network engineer, the CCNA directly helped me to do that. So when you come into the cloud, you learn the foundations of networking, right? You learn about IP address and subnetting. Now that looks different in the cloud. Sure. Although you do have an IP address, you do have a what you call a CIDR block. When it comes to a subnet, a lot of times in, in, on our networking side on premises, we look at the CIDR block or the subnet as a boundary for our VLANs. Mm -hmm. But in the cloud, that subnet just identifies a group of addresses. Mm -hmm. you, apply, you can apply access and security there, but the same constructs of a routing in between is kind of different in the cloud. So when it comes to that CCNA, answer your question, it still is a helpful cert in order for you to learn networking in the cloud because it'll help you with that foundation. And once you understand networking at a foundational level, then you can build on top of that by learning cloud. And concepts. you know this is true because Dewan was, you know, a network engineer at heart, <laughs> you know. Not every day. And, and now he's a developer advocate for AWS. <laughs> so you see that he's actually bridged the two areas. Um, yes. So what he says is, is gospel around here. <laughs> it's, it's been a pro progression. I was a network engineer, and then I realized how automation was really important to my job role. Mm -hmm. right. But as I was learning automation, something just seemed to be missing. Mm -hmm. You know, and then when I went to the cloud, I was like, oh, okay, so the automation comes from the cloud because you can actually deploy your infrastructure in a declarative way, Yeah. right? And so that's the part of the building blocks, bringing everything full circle with your networking skills, your automation skills, and then those cloud skills, and now you have a full stack network engineer. So we're talking <laughs> CCNA and Dev Associate at this point, where you are actually are familiar with how to, how to be a network engineer and then how to go into the automation and leverage these automation skills to essentially automate your cloud network. True, because when we talk about our cloud network, the cloud is API driven. 100%. It's, it's API driven. So when you're building out your applications, when you're building out your network, you're gonna use some tool like Terraform. You're gonna use some tool like, like CloudFormation to deploy your, your infrastructure, your services to the cloud. And then maybe some configuration management with Ansible, Python or something else on top of that. So we talked about the how. Right. As a network engineer, why should I care about the cloud? Again, this goes back to where do you want to go in your career? Are you doing any type of cloud in your current role? And if so, if you want cloud skills, I think it's important as the in industry evolves, there's two pieces that we kind of need to learn, right? Of course, the foundation of networking is at the core. The second piece, learning a little bit of automation. The third piece is going to be that cloud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just the way the world is becoming hybrid, the networks are becoming borderless. And so for you to be able to really provide the support, the infrastructure of for, to your infrastructure, those skills are really yeah. important. And you said the key word in all of that, which is, is hybrid, right? Yes. So there's going to be necessities where we have to run workloads on premises yes. and the let's call it the classic way of deploying applications right. and managing our own infrastructure is necessary and key. And, and we need to understand collectively as an organization how those things go. Right. Um, but there could be um, you know, cost, speed, yes. benefits that come from deploying to, to cloud, in, cloud infrastructure or, right. or cloud networks and allowing us to um, deliver those uh, business objectives a lot faster right. than we might have been able to in the past just with our on-premises services. So within an organizational aspect, having the, the knowledge on both ends of the spectrum really tr truly hits into that hybrid concept. Right. Um, and the, the, it doesn't necessarily need to be one person but as, a, as an engineer in these spaces, it's helpful to have an understanding in some way in all those aspects. And I think that, I think that, that stuff is in, insanely helpful. Yes, when you look at on-prem, on as a network engineer, you may have to determine how much does 
um, how much capacity does a load support into your infrastructure or how much port capacity do we have right. in a switch or just understanding that aspect when it comes to on-premises. In the cloud, it's kind of the same thing. You need to understand the DTO, yeah. data transfer route. You need to understand the data transfer in between regions. You need to understand all of these pieces for one, for cost savings, and then to know what is actually supported on the application design for your developers. And you see it at Cisco all the time, right? Like yeah. with Cisco, our technology now is not just on-prem and that's it. It's on-prem and extending to cloud, on-prem and connecting your on-prem right. to the whatever service provider and flavor du jour that you're using, yeah. right? And so um, even from you know where I come from, where I live in learning and certification, we recently released a blueprint around Cloud Connect. Well, I was going to bring that up. To, yeah. to actually certify what we're talking about, to say, yeah, I am an infrastructure engineer that knows about the that knows about cloud and knows about engineer and network engineering, but I can also make that connection from my on-prem to whatever service provider. I can actually make that securely, and I know how to do that as a hybrid cloud kind of deployment. Right. And so. Um, Cisco is driving that. Cisco is collaborating with AWS and other folks to be able to provide solutions to kind of bridge that gap between on-prem and to the cloud. That's why I enjoy working with both of you. <laughs> because both of, they both come from developer backgrounds, so they always saw this big picture of hybrid. Right. Yeah. And, and so I learned a lot from you both. I thank you for being able to work with you yeah. and bring me back on Snack Man. It's, it's been a pleasure. Well, pleasure. you know what I see out of all of this, in, in, in a setup to the Cloud Connections certification and, and working in AWS, is a series where we actually show the, the real how. Like, right, right. you know, 10 minutes of this, 10 minutes yes. of that. That'll but be fun, actually. What's a VPC? How yes. do I define my exactly. uh, How do I define my uh, do it. application deployments? Yeah. And let's do it. it yeah. yeah. Let's, do it. Let's, let's build something. You saw it right now, right <laughs> here, maybe, maybe we'll have a, a spin-off of Snack, <laughs> yeah. Snack Minute in the cloud. <laughs> yeah, there build we go. Build something in the cloud. Yeah. yeah. Yes, build um, something in the cloud. So, Dewan, thank you so much for kind of jumping into the, the deep end of the pool with us yes. on this topic. Yes. Um, it's something that I think Snackers, we're going to see a lot more of from us and from Cisco in general and even AWS and so. But before we go. Oh yeah, please. So when we talk about getting started with the cloud, of course we're going to lag. Yeah. There's a well architected labs for, for AWS oh, okay. that are online. Free labs that you can have access to. You can use your own AWS account. There's the AWS free tier where you have access to free services for a particular amount of time, usually a year, but I would check the details for more information, as well as when we talk about certifications, the AWS Cloud Practitioner Certification to teach you about the cloud from a very high level when we talk about the different building blocks of the cloud, whether it's storage, networking, compute, database, security. You and, learn all that at that level. And to add to all of this, if also if you're interested in and looking at what, at what Cisco's doing and training on what Cisco's doing from uh, Cisco on-prem and cloud. We have partnered with AWS. We have a bunch of adjacent technology content in our Cisco U awesome. portfolio. So check out Cisco U at u.cisco.com. Look at all of the AWS training that we brought in and leverage what labs that Lab Every Day is telling <laughs> you about. <laughs> All right, Snackers, that's all the time we have. Dwan, thank you very much for this. Uh, Kareem, always a pleasure. Yes. All right. Can't and we'll catch same. you guys next week. Thank all you right. so much. Peace. Cheers.